All right, everyone, I already did a short the other day, just sort of a flash announcement of this, but uh, we need to dig a little bit deeper because I think some people are in denial about what the special counsel appointment for the Hunter Biden probe actually entails. Uh, long story short, if you have a special investigation going on into Hunter and his business dealings pertinent to his dad, and there's a little bit of an accidental omission by the fact that Garland even appointed a special uh, investigator here. David Weiss, by the way, Trump appointee, but then again, Trump also appointed Mike Pence. So uh, when that line sort of falls flat when you use that as a liberal to say, well, the investigation will be totally, totally above board and totally proper. Now, I'll tell you what they're doing by pointing the special counsel to look into the matter. You are cock-blocking Congress from subpoenaing Hunter Biden. Please, liberals, for once in your godforsaken lives, stop being a political partisan and ask yourself if 48 hours is a coincidental window between when Congress announces that they intend to subpoena Hunter Biden and when Merrick Garland makes that legally impossible. Do you think that that's a coincidence, or do you think, hey, hmm, maybe it's because Ann, uh, Weiss can slow down the proceedings, sit on the evidence, determine whether in the end to even release a full report to the public and not just a redacted, annotated version, while preventing the congressional Republicans from grilling Hunter Biden, catching him in a lie and potentially impeaching Daddy, because that's really what it's about. This isn't about Hunter Biden. This is about the fact that Hunter Biden has information pertinent to the dirty dealings of his dad and to certain foreign business conglomerates. This isn't about Hunter. Uh, the, the cover, the cope for now for a significant length of time has been, you're obsessed with Hunter's dick. Why don't you stop thinking about Cox? The only people I see bringing that up at all, other than Marjorie Taylor Greene as part of congressional testimony into human trafficking, are, are liberals that are coping for the Biden short boss, basically. They're coping for Joe. And they don't even care about Hunter. They'd throw him under the bus in a second if it would defend the big guy. Hunter Biden is a sleazebag. He's a druggie, he's a human trafficker, in the literal sense, according, at least under the law, bringing a prostitute across state lines is literally a felony, by the way, um, has done all sorts of crazy shit, but he's not a politician. He's not a public official. The only reason he's even relevant and that anyone's even talking about him is because he has information on what his dad was doing. Hunter Biden was working as a middleman for daddy. We know that. Uh, we, we have objective proof at this point. Most of the content of the laptop seems to have dealt with foreign business dealings. We've got a $3.5 million payment from one person that then almost immediately went to dinner with Biden after, despite the fact that I believe that was one of the people he claimed he never met. We have pictures of him meeting with others that he objectively stated to the American public that he never met with at all. He claimed that he never discussed business with Hunter. We now know that's false. He claimed he never told anything, talked to any of his business associates. We know that's false. We have several whistleblowers and testimony from Archer and, and uh, several other people, Bob Linsky, uh, proving this. Uh, under normal circumstances, if a normal person were claimed to have uh, done something business-related and, and gotten 20-some-odd million dollars, uh, illegally, like it wouldn't for a normal civilian, you can do foreign business all you want. You can peddle your influence; it's perfectly fine. You're not a politician, not a chief executive. Let's say that you you commit fraud or something like that, or the business is tied to the mafia or something like that. You make twenty million dollars, or even the lesser amount. We'll we'll put it at three point five, and you have several individuals, including members of the government, that are testifying to the public. Hey, look, something's wrong here. And we think that he was using his son as a middleman to uh, try to hide himself uh, from, from, you know, being scrutinized for doing business with a cartel or terrorist group or something. You would absolutely right now be under investigation. You'd probably be in a jail cell, actually. You probably already would have been found guilty because you've got a fairly ironclad case. We have the laptop. We have pictures, we have video, we have audio, we have emails, receipts, and so forth. We've got people, by the way, who have corroborated a number of those emails. All you had to do was say, oh, this is who it was sent to. Let me contact him. Hey, did you receive this email? Yes, indeed. Okay, well, that's pretty cut and dry. I don't think that he has a bunch of real emails on his laptop or in his cloud and then a bunch of fake ones that were produced by uh, Roger Stone or something like that. Does It wouldn't make any sense. The truth is that Hunter was involved with foreign business dealings of a dubious nature. 
His vice presidential daddy should have had no involvement with them under various laws in the United States. But he did. He was talking to these people, and when you're doing that, it's more than the insinuation of access. That was, oh, the Hunter's selling the illusion of access to these people. He's impressing them by calling up daddy and talking small talk for a few minutes. I don't think that's the way that the business world really works, especially in a place like Ukraine or China, but that's what the liberals would have you believe. The fact is that the special counsel looking into this is specifically to cock block other investigations that might end up in actual prosecution. There are two possibilities for how this plays out. Number one, the more likely one, David Weiss simply shields Biden. He kicks the can down the road. He uses his wide legal latitude under the authority of Merrick Garland, who will be the one that finally decides whether to even again put out any of the info that's found in the public and how much to redact it if they do. He will slow walk it. Or maybe even Weiss isn't even involved. The problem is that Merrick Garland gets to garden weasel the entire proceedings. Hey, it only, only lasted a couple months. Hey, Congress, I'm going to need the next two years to write up the report. It's a really long report. He can do that. And there's fundamentally but fuck nothing the Republicans in Congress, even if they had the will to do so, and that's questionable, could do about it. But the timing is not coincidental. So the first possibility is they just endlessly shield Biden. The public knows nothing further about the issue because Congress isn't allowed to subpoena either of the Biden prime family members involved. The second possibility is that they do release a scathing Watergate-style report because they're trying to get rid of Joe, and they don't want him to be the candidate in 24 because they don't think he can win. One of these two things will happen. You'll see a slow walking, or you'll see the removal of Joe Biden. And people will huzzah and think that justice has been served if the latter is the case. Oh, they're willing to throw him under the bus if they need to. It'll be entirely for political reasons. Why do you think Gavin Newsom is basically running an unofficial uh, presidential candidacy right now? He knows there's at least, the, it's for the same reasons that DeSantis is running. He has says, well, there's a vague possibility that Trump will die or be killed or incapacitated because, you know, he's old. Or that he'll be prevented from running by an act of Congress. Multiple states simply cock block him. In that case, I will soar because I'm the second place finisher. Gavin Newsom is basically acting the same way on the other side. By the way, so too is RFK Jr., although he actually bothered to get in, being, oddly enough for a Kennedy, more of a political outsider than Newsom. And so he figured that'd be part of his strategy. He wanted to be more evident, I think. The special counsel appointment is solely to protect the Bidens or to set up a, a basically a kingmaker move where they shove him aside and say, yeah, you're too old, but it's really for corruption reasons, and they get Newsom or Whitmer or somebody like that to run. One of those two is definitely what will occur. That's about all. Peace out.